Hello, Squirrel Tribe. How is everybody doing? It is Wednesday, which is hump day, my dudes. Hopefully you're having a great day. So listen, I had a lot of things I want to talk to you about today. I'm going to save them for tomorrow. One of them is an East Palestine, Ohio update that we need to have a conversation on. Another one has to do with a food issue we need to have a conversation on. But I saw a video, I was randomly scrolling. I don't know how this came up in my newsfeed, but it did. And I'm going to put a link to this uh, YouTube video in the pinned comment of this video when it's all said and done. But it's a video titled, 11 year old leaves school board shocked after reading inappropriate book from school library out loud. It is a YouTube video and it is a child who is, let's see if I can mute this. Um, this is hard to see. But it is this, this child right here, an 11 year old who goes to his school board, that's in the way, who goes to his school board and he reads a book that he found in his school's library. Now as an 11 year old, he's either in sixth or fifth grade. I don't remember exactly which one it is. I think it's sixth grade. And this book y'all that he picks up and he um, starts reading is extremely concerning, especially for a 11 year old boy, especially for a sixth grader, anybody under 18, in my opinion. And I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that I'm the most uptight person in the world. I'm also not the most free willy nilly, you know, whatever kind of person in the world. I'm somewhere in the middle. Like I have a weird sense of humor. Sometimes it's, it's a little, you know, I'm a little boyish with my sense of humor. Sometimes it is what it is. And I don't talk to my kid. Like she's an idiot. I talk to her like she needs to understand the world and what is going on. And when books first started, when people first got on this kick of banning books, I was like, are you effing kidding me? Like they're books, like what's the problem here? When they banned To Killing Mockingbird, To Kill a Mockingbird, I was like, why? There are certain books that are banned that do not make sense to me. However, to ban To Kill a Mockingbird from schools and then allow in books that talk about, especially into a middle school situation, I'm pretty sure this kid was in sixth grade, into a middle school situation, a book that talks about a boy undressing another boy and sex and things like that is, in my opinion, extremely disturbing. Like where in the F are we as a society that this is what is in our school libraries? Now, when it comes to public school, there are a lot of people out there who are going to do the whole, oh my God, what kind of parent are you? I can't believe you have your kid in public school. Listen, it is what it is for a lot of people. There are a lot of working parents out there who must put their kids into public school because they do not have other options. There are uh, private schools that are closing down left and right right now, especially same sex schools. So there's an all girls school in Atlanta. They've only got like two or 300 students, but this is the last year they'll be able to stay in business because most kids do not want to go to same sex schools anymore. They don't want a girl's school or an all boys school. Parents aren't willing or a lot of times able now to pay these private school fees. A lot of private schools that are um, intertwined of what is, I don't even know what the right word is, where it's boys and girls, whatever, multi-sex, which sounds wrong. I don't know what that is. Co-ed, that makes more sense. The ones that are co-ed, even those are having issues keeping their doors open because of how much it costs, right? So now you're down to public schools or figuring out how to homeschool. Well, homeschooling during the pand pandemic was a lot easier for a lot of people. Now that a lot of people are back at work, homeschooling, not as easy. And plus there's, excuse me, a lot of kids who are only children who have um, parents who work from home where working, uh, staying at home and being homeschooled isn't the best option for the child, the child, for the parents, for the family, whatever else. But that's not the point. Anyway, so these schools have these books that are just highly inappropriate. I know you guys know this already. I know a lot of you have mentioned previously in the past when we've had conversations on random stuff and you've said, what about the books that are in the schools? And my child has not come across one of those. I've asked her, we had a conversation about it this morning after I saw this video. I said, Hey kid, because I call her kid, no, she's not a goat, but I'm not going to say her name when I don't need to, because not everybody needs to know her name and it doesn't need to be said 10,000 times. Right. Anyway. So I said, kid, um, what kind of books are in your school library? Are there books that are, you know, inappropriate? And she goes, no, we see them on TikTok though. Like TikTok tells you all the kinds of books that, that, um, we shouldn't be reading, but it's always TikToks that are aimed at kids. And it's books about, you know, letting your freak flag fly, which is the hardest thing in the world to say, or books on, you know, the first kiss, but it's always boy, boy, girl, girl. There's a TV show on Netflix called Heartstopper. It's a boy on boy 
TV show. There's all kinds of same-sex couples being introduced on Disney cartoons and Disney movies, on Netflix, on regular ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, Fox, um, not often on Fox, but on different TV shows, right? And that's something that I think as parents, we can say, no, you're not watching this, and we turn it off. We, as parents, aren't in our children's libraries at schools. So when books are put in there and we don't understand what's going on with those books, but the kids are checking them out, they're reading them because the librarian is saying, hey, this would be a good one for you. Or, hey, this one has pictures in it. You might like this one. How are we as parents supposed to keep our children safe when the schools are pushing things on them that should not be pushed in my personal opinion there is nothing wrong with a parent having a conversation with their child about sexuality about you know um boy boy girl girl whatever that we need to have the conversations about those kids who from some weird reason think they're cats we need to have the conversation about girls who think they're boys and boys who think they're girls we need to have all of those conversations but we need to have them from a standpoint of this is what is being pushed. This is what is real. This is what makes sense. This is what doesn't make sense. And to see these books on these school shelves that are highly, highly inappropriate at no point in time should a sixth grader be able to go to their library and on, on a display, like, you know, at the library, um, at schools, they used to have like those books in the front. They'd be like, this is great for first graders, second graders, third graders, blah, 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 whatever. And it would be the recommended book of the week or the whatever like that. There should never, ever, even in high school, and I know high schoolers are humping like rabbits. I fully understand. I was a high schooler. I wasn't humping like rabbits, but I knew a lot of people who were. And it was like, man, I'm really surprised you made it out of here without three kids. But anyway, there should never be books on the shelves for these children that has anything to do with intercourse, that has anything to do with same sex, whatever, in my personal opinion. Now, if there's a, a thing in there and it's like, oh, so Bob and Joe happen to be going out on a date, cool. But when it's Bob began unbuckling Joe's pants and pulled them down and his manhood was, we have gone too far, my dudes. We have gone way too far when that is a book that the public schools and whoever runs the public schools has deemed appropriate for our children. I now understand a lot better why people are like, hey, you should homeschool your kid. Now, I, I mean, I've always understood the reason behind it, especially now. Today, I saw an article from Atlanta about a stabbing. A, a boy stabbed a, another boy at a high school. They had to like lock it down. The kid had to go to surgery. There was a stabbing um, in Orlando yesterday, the day before. Some 15-year-old decided to st de like stab this 16-year-old girl to death. She died from it. Uh, there's been this whole uptick of... I would say violence inside schools. And maybe it's not an uptick. Maybe it happened forever in a day. And because we have social media all over the place now, we just see it more. But I try to remember when I was in high school, nobody brought a gun to my school. Nobody stabbed anybody at my school. Were there fist fights? Yes. Were there girls who were doing that slappy thing like this, pulling hair, kicking each other? Oh yeah, all day long. Were there guys who were like, you know, pretending like they were gonna fight and then, you know, wussed out? That too. All kinds of stuff happened, but at no point in time, and when I was in high school, was it a just go ahead and go straight to shooting and stabbing each other? Like, why is that where we are these days? Is it because of the friggin' books they're reading from the library? Although I do want to say, and this is going to sound wrong, any kid that decides they're going to shoot somebody or stab somebody probably doesn't read books on a regular basis. I'm just going to put it out there like that. Think what you will. But when I saw this, this video of this boy having to go up in front of the school board to read this book. Uh, one, I was very proud of this boy for understanding that this was not something that an 11 year old needed to read. Okay. Number one, two, for calling out the librarian for telling him that it would be a great book and then offering him the, 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 um, what is the picture version of it? The, comic version. It's not really a comic, but the comic book version of it. And then for going to his parents and saying, Hey, listen, this is in my library. I don't think it's appropriate. Something needs to happen. So kudos to that kid, which means kudos to those parents. Although some people will say, well, if they were good parents, their kid wouldn't be in public school, but they're good enough parents, obviously that their child knew the difference between right and wrong for their age, especially, and said something to them as opposed to, you know, reading it under the covers and not telling anybody or whatever. I don't think, this is where it gets like a slippery slope for a lot of people, myself included, I'm not gonna lie. I think kids should be able to 
figure out who they are and grow. My daughter is 14 and a half, almost 15. And I'm not going to butt into every personal aspect of her life. I know what books she has because I buy them, right? We go to the bookstore together and I, I get them for her and I look at, I read the back of them. I look them up. I talk about them on my other channel on Squirrel Tribe 2.0, which is the family vlog channel. I talk about them over there. And if somebody says, hey, by the way, there's a part in that book that's not good. I go take the book from the kid and I go return it. There's no questions asked, right? Um, but I feel like a lot of kids need to have the ability to kind of figure out who and what they are. I don't think sixth grade is the place to do it. I don't think seventh grade is the place to do it. I don't think eighth grade is the place to do it. I understand that questions for kids start to arise at that time and they need to have something that kind of helps answer those questions. But books that are aimed at, at erotica is not the answer. That's not how you figure out anything. All that does is confuse the crap out of you. I used to love romance novels when I was younger. We're about to TMI the hell out of this, but it's fine. You know, 14, 15, maybe for boys, 13 is when everything south of the border starts to like kick into gear and you're like, what is that? What is happening? You see something and everything kicks into gear. You read something and things kick into gear. And at 13, 14, 15, I didn't need to be reading books about girl on girl, boy on boy, whatever else, because it would have confused the crap out of me while my hormones were raging because it's all brand new. And I would have had no idea what was happening, what was triggering, what was going on down South, what was triggering, what was happening in my mind. I never would have understood it. I liked romance novels when I was younger, but the first one I read at like maybe 14 or 15 that, you know, triggered some South of the border stuff. I was like, um, I think I'm going to put this down now because I don't know what to think of this. And I stopped reading them until I was probably 17 or 18 until I could understand what was happening that I was reading. And then it could make sense on what was happening, you know, physical responses and whatnot. And I'm not the only person who has that. So don't look at me like I'm weird. We all have physical responses when hormones kick in and all the way up 42. And I still have physical responses. My husband walks by in gray sweatpants and I'm like, man, you're lucky you're busy or else I'm pouncing. Like it's just the way it is. We have physical responses. Sixth graders don't have physical responses, generally speaking. So for them, finding these books in their, their school library is going to be hella confusing. They're going to be like, why is Brad kissing Charlie? And then they're going to look at their friend and go, I guess this is normal. Do I kiss you? That's it's, it's, I don't want to say it's wrong. You guys are going to, some of y'all are going to agree. Some of you are going to disagree. I will, I will say as often as possible, I believe your sexuality is something you are born with. Your true sexuality is something you are born with. I believe people are born straight and I believe people are born gay. Do I also think there are people out there who fake gay because they think it's a cool thing to do so they can run around with a pride flag? Oh yes. Do I think that trans, trans, transgenders are born that way? No. I don't think that you are born in the wrong body. I think either, I think a lot of those people just don't want to admit they're gay or whatever it is. I, that, that's a whole, to me, that one is something that's pushed by the media and everything else. And it's its own little shit and pony show, whatever. But I do believe your sexuality is something you are born with. Well, people may not agree. That's perfectly fine. My opinion, I'm not going to change it because people don't agree with it. But I don't think that in sixth grade, anybody, boy or girl needs to be reading about unbuckling anybody's pants, pulling down anybody's underwear, kissing on anybody in certain areas of their bodies, because it's confusing while you're, you're trying to figure out exactly who you are as a person. And this is way before your brain has matured enough to even understand that you might be attracted to somebody, whether it is a boy or a girl or same sex, opposite sex, whatever else. So for the schools to willingly put these books in there and, and think that it's okay, they're going to say, oh, well, you know, eighth graders, they're old enough. No, the hell they're not. No, the hell they're not. If they're not old enough to have sex legally, they're not old enough to read about sex legally. That's my, my, my opinion nothing in the schools should be aimed at children that should that are are that have how to phrase that have um scenarios that they cannot engage in do you know what i mean y'all know what i mean it, there's no reason for that book to be in that school and i don't even know what state it's in i don't think they say i could be wrong i'm gonna like i said i'll put the link for the video in the pinned comment of this video um 
my kid is in public school and she's going to stay in public school until she graduate high school. It's what she wants. And there's no problem with her because we have full on conversations. We talk about everything all the time. Homeschooling her would not work for the man and I because of the way we work. It would not work for her because she would lose her ever loving mind being stuck with mom and dad all day long because there's not a huge homeschool community where we live. It would be very difficult for her to still have that extracurricular outside of the house activities. Right. Um, Plus, she really likes going to school. She likes her teacher. She likes her friends. She likes everything else. But because she does have the mom she does and the dad she does, she understands the difference between what's right and wrong and what is something that is being pushed by an agenda and what is something that is normal. So we have conversations, again, like I said, all the time. And I know a lot of people out there are in the same boat. Your kids are in public school and you, it's great for them and you're, you're not going to change it just because other people don't agree with it. I think if you have the ability to homeschool your child, man, yay for you. Like in all honesty, with the way our world is, yay for you. Your kid's probably not going to get stabbed at home. You know what I'm saying? Your kid's not going to have to worry about finding a book they shouldn't find unless of course mom and dad are f- freaky deaky and they forget to hide their stuff. But I'm just saying for those of you who homeschool, I mean, more power to you because I think it's amazing that you have the ability and the desire and everybody's on board with doing that. That's absolutely amazing. It's just not feasible for everybody, right? But anyway, um, this is why I think parents have got to really pay attention to go to the PTA meetings, go to whatever things are going on in the schools, go in there, be nosy, snoop around, look at stuff, Google the crap out of all of the teachers, look them up on Facebook, find them on Instagram, see what they're doing outside of the classroom, make sure they're not, you know, pedophiles in the height and hiding or anything or weird, whatever's, you know, there's just a whole lot going on these days that you got to be wary of. And the best way is to be diligent in keeping up with what's going on in your children's lives, in their schools, in any places they go, whether it's sports related, whatever. But when I saw this video, my first thought was, are you effing kidding me? I said more than effing, but because I'm trying to be good here on YouTube, we're going to stick with effing. But I saw it and I was like, man, good kid. Parents raised him right. What the hell's wrong with that school? That was just my thoughts. Okay. It's getting late. It's already 6.30. I have to cook dinner now. Today got away from me, which is why there's only one video today. Tomorrow, I'm coming back with two or three because we need to talk about, we need to talk about East Palestine, Ohio, y'all. We need to talk about um, what they're doing to some of the foods. It's it's important. And then some other random stuff tomorrow. So hopefully you will be back, Squirrel Tribe. Uh, I appreciate you guys for being here for this. I would love your thoughts and opinions on all of it. Whatever you want to say, there is no, um, it's an open community. Do what you got to do. I don't delete people's comments unless they're just so like, just absolutely just rude and, um, you know, whatever. But if YouTube don't let it through, that's on them. Don't blame it on me. So I love you all squirrel tribe and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye.